This video I'm making especially for those of you that are newer sellers and you're not familiar yet with Seller Amp. This is one of those softwares that I use daily in my Amazon business for both online arbitrage and for finding wholesale. So I wanna help you guys learn how to use this software and give you a basic tutorial so that you can feel comfortable using Seller Amp on your own. But first, if you're new here, I'm Cassandra and I'm a full-time Amazon seller. On this channel, you'll find me each and every week talking all things Amazon FBA related to try and help you to become a successful Amazon seller. So if you're into that, please subscribe to the channel because it means a lot to me. In this video, I'm going to walk you guys through all of the different features that you see here that you get with Seller Amp. And there's a lot of them. Basically all of the research that you need to do and look at the data, look at the numbers, do some storefront stocking, everything can be done very quickly by using Seller Amp. So that is usually my first stop when I'm doing product research. So let me show you how I do it. When you have Seller Amp, it's going to come up on any listing that you click on right over here on the right hand side. So we're just going to start at the top and work our way down. We have the reviews and the ratings right here at the top and underneath that we have the ASIN. So I can click right here and copy that ASIN, which is important to me because even though I check Seller Amp first, I always run this data second into Profit Guru just to make sure everything matches up. So I like always having quick access to that ASIN. Coming down a little bit further, next I can see if I'm actually eligible to sell this product. Right here I can see that I am good to go, I'm on gated in this brand. However, if it said I was not eligible, all I would need to do is go into Seller Central right here and request approval. One of two things will happen here. I'm either going to get auto on gated and be able to sell the brand, or a selling application will come up where then I'll have to jump through a few hoops, typically find a distributor that Amazon accepts their invoices from and order at least 10 of that brand name. That's how you get on gated. Next, I can see the estimated sales right here. So this is really strong. You wanna make sure that you're selling arbitrage products that have very strong sales volume, right? You don't wanna invest in products that you're going to send to the warehouse and they're going to just sit there because that's not how you make money. So it's good to be able to quickly see the estimated number of sales per month that each item is making. Beside that is the max cost. And this number comes from what you input as your parameters into Seller Amp. So whatever you tell Seller Amp you wanna make for your ROI and your profit, it's going to tell you what the max cost is that you can get for this cost of good and still make that profit that you wanna make. Underneath that, we have our sales calculator, which again, I don't just rely on this one because none of them are exact. So I usually like to start here and then I also run the numbers through my Profit Guru calculator just to make sure that everything looks aligned. So you can see right here, it has the sale price at $39.08, which currently appears to be where the buy box is. So based on pricing the item where the buy box is, let's say we did get this item for $22.09. Then I can see my profit right here at a quick glance and my ROI. Moving back up a little bit, BSR right here, that is best seller rank. So basically in order to be a fast moving product, you wanna stay in the top 1%. So if you're not familiar with really how to check BSR and understand if a product has a good rank or not, Seller Amp tells you very quickly right here. I can see this product has the top 1% BSR, meaning that this product is selling fast. Next right here, I can see where the prices are. So where the buy box stands, what Amazon has it as, lowest FBA offer, lowest FBM offer. And really this thumbs up here is pretty significant. I found that products where it has the green thumbs up, those are usually typically really good products to sell. But if it has the red thumbs down, then generally speaking, those probably aren't the best of products to be jumping onto. And we can also change it up here to be looking at 90 day, 30 day, and all. So you can see how it fluctuates and changes, and you can see how the buy box is changing throughout time. So currently we're at $39.08 for the buy box, the past 30 day average $39.13, 90 day average $39.55. So that's good news to me as a reseller. I can see that the buy box isn't fluctuating too much and I can pretty much count on it staying around this price. Next, I can see the Keepa BSR drops, bestseller rank drops. So in the past 30 days, this has had 167 drops. Now drops don't indicate just one sale. A drop indicates sales, but we don't know the number of sales. So within one drop, that could mean one sale or five sales or 10 sales. We just don't know, but we know guaranteed this has had 167 drops.
drops. But clearly, based on the estimated sales and its BSR, we know that that doesn't just mean 167 sales, it's significantly more than that. I really like this feature here, estimated time to sale. So this is based on your sell price, the stock volume of everybody, how all of the different competition is priced, but typically saying this would mean before my first sale would take place, it would only be maybe one day, which gives you a really good idea on if you're investing in a product that you're going to have to just sit on for a while before you actually get your money reinvested back to you. And I can see next that this data was all checked 16 minutes ago and I could click here and refresh it. Next, we can see all of the different alerts that we should be aware of. So we can see that this product is eligible for me to sell. Hazmat, that is important to know because you can't just sell hazmat products on Amazon. If it's considered a dangerous good, you have to go through the hazmat training program. So it's important to know if the product is hazmat or not. I can see it's not hazmat, it's not a dangerous good. And right here, it's telling me the likelihood of Amazon sharing the buy box. So the buy box is what the price is set at and whoever clicks add to cart, whoever has that price at that moment is the seller that is going to get the sale. So that's good that it's saying that Amazon is likely to share the buy box and rotate it to you so that you can get some sales. IP analysis. If a brand does not want you selling their products and you jump onto the listing, they're going to hit you with an IP complaint, an IP violation, and that does not look good on your account health for one. And number two, that means that you're going to have to get off of this listing. So you'll have to either remove your stock or just sell out really fast. So it's really important to know if the brand is issuing these IP complaints. And I can see here that this one is not. Next, I can see the size and underneath that, if it is a multiple, because during the summer seasons, you cannot FBA multiple items. And then finally, the one that we do have for an alert is variations because there's two variations on this listing. So always make sure that you're looking at the correct variation for the product that you're trying to source when you're jumping onto the listing. Coming down further, now we have our Keepa charts here where we can see everything like where the buy box is, the sales rank, how that's fluctuating, how Amazon is priced versus the other sellers, all of that good data. And this light color, I can see that's Amazon. So I know just by looking at this, that this is a listing that Amazon likes and clearly they're on all the time. Down here is really cool because if you like to move all of the products you're looking at to a Google Sheet, you can come here and export it to the sheet of your choice. So you set up your Google Sheet with all of your different columns and this will just plug that product in there and give you all of the data for it. The ROI, the profit, everything you need to know right onto that sheet. Now down here is where I really like to look. I can see all of the sellers that are here on this listing, as well as their stock, how much they have in stock. Then I can see the price they have it at and what their estimated profit and ROI is. So for this product in particular, just from looking at this, it's probably not a product I wanna jump onto because Amazon has their price considerably lower than all of the other prices. So if we're sitting up here at the $50 mark and Amazon is on this listing year round, they have a thousand in stock, they're not going out of stock, and theirs is priced at $39, that tells me that I'm not going to be able to compete with them on this listing. Now what I do when I see Amazon on the listing is I go down to my keep a chart and check those buy box statistics. Right here underneath the listing, I can see my Keepa, and you're going to wanna go right here to data. Next, hit buy box statistics. This is going to tell us how that buy box is rotating and which seller is actually getting the sales. So in the past 30 days here, 98% of the sales has gone to Amazon, which isn't surprising because all of the data that SellerAmp was just showing us told us that Amazon dominates this listing, but I do like to check here just to see how much they're dominating it. If there's room for me to come in and make some sales, which for this one, clearly there's not. They are being very greedy on this listing. But another way that I like to use SellerAmp is to storefront stock. Now, typically sellers are going to sell products that they're able to find for a profit. Not many sellers like to sell products that aren't making them any money. I mean, some of them do, but generally speaking, everybody's selling on Amazon with the goal in mind to be profitable. So what I like to do is come over here and find some sellers who look like they might be uh, maybe a seller where I could get my hands on the same types of products they are. 
and run with it. So when I first started, I wasn't looking for sellers that had too many ratings, too many reviews, because those might have been wholesale sellers and you need your business credentials to set that up. But now that I have all of that set up, that doesn't stop me. Now I am looking for wholesale products and arbitrage products at the same time. So what I would do here is just click on a seller. We'll click this button here that says FBM and seller amp now brings up all of the storefront information for the seller. So I can see here their ratings, how many ASINs they currently have, which categories they're in, and the brands that they're mostly selling. So if these are brands that I myself can get my hands on and sell easily, then I have potential products and potential profit right here that I can just piggyback off of. And then as you can see, as you're scrolling through the products that the seller is selling, you can see all of the data for it. So we have our chart here. We can see the historical data of what's going on, BSR, the max cost based on our rules and parameters, all of the offers and where the buy box is. So this is really powerful to be able to just jump into other seller storefronts really quick and try to grab some of the products that they're selling and start selling them yourself. And the last way that I want to show you that I use seller amp is when I am actually on a store how I can just bring it up and then cross-reference those products through Amazon at the same time without actually having to go onto Amazon. So what I do is I will go to where I'm finding the sales and the deals that week. Typically, Walgreens is where I really like to start. And I'm going to right-click right over top of the image. Now I'm going to scroll down and go to SAS search. Now you can see it is loading seller amp right here on my Walgreens site and I can check all of the data for the product. So this is telling me it has a really good rank. It's selling strong, but the buy box is just over $15. So the max cost to get the profit back that I want to see would be $4. So that means that even with the buy one, get one free, this product's too expensive, but that's okay. All I would do is go to the next one, right click, do my search and move on. Now this product pops up and I can see if there's any profit here. This saves me a lot of time. I don't have to keep going into Amazon and manually typing in the product to try to find it and see what it's going for on Amazon. All I need to do is right click, do my SAS search, and it's going to pop up right here. Let's check these gummies. Sometimes these nature made gummies when they have a really good sale going on can be good sellers. Right click, SAS search. So there might be a little bit of profit here. They're buy one, get one free, $20.49 each. And right now the buy box is at $19. So it might be cutting it close. So at this point, what I would do is come right up here to this little Amazon button and go into the listing to look at the profit calculator. Okay, so on Walgreens, after my discounts and everything like that and the money off, I'd be paying about $18 for two of them. So that's about $9 each. So $9 for my cost price. Let me go down and see what a good competitive sell price would be. And I'm going to do that by looking at all the other sellers and see what they have it priced for right now. So we have some lower sellers here under $18. And then we have quite a few sellers up here at $18. And overall, there are 63 offers on this listing. So it's a pretty competitive place to be. And they have quite a bit in stock up here. The seller has 48, this one has 40. But those are also merchant fulfilled sellers. So what I would need to do next is go down to the data here at Keepa and see who's winning the sales. So in the past 30 days, right here, I can see if there's a check that's an FBA seller. So most of these sellers are FBA sellers. I have right here, this seller is FBM. They want it 15% of the time. This one's FBM 2% of the time. But the majority right here, Amazon is winning the listing 50% of the time. And these ones right here are all FBA sellers. They're getting it four and 3% of the time. So there's not really a lot of room here for me to make sales, but I would just run through first, come here and look at the price history. So checking the price, I'm just trying to make sure that it's staying steady. So I know that it's going for about $18, but is that the average? Is it typically going for $18? Because maybe the buy box is just spiked right now. So you always wanna check. And looking back at it, we're dropping to 17 a little bit, but for the majority of the time, the buy box is around $18. Right here where it's white and not a cream color, um, Amazon does jump off of the listing a little bit, but mainly they're on it. So right here, starting November 18th, Amazon has been on it steady. They have not come off at all. And today it is December 28th. 
So they like to be on this listing. Next, I would come up and say, okay, I'm getting it for $9. I'm going to sell it for maybe $18.75 to be competitive. Then I can see that my profit would only be $1.51 and my ROI just under 17%. So personally, I would not go with this product. This isn't even taking into account the price of me shipping it to Amazon. So that would be just over a dollar in profit here. Yes, there's a little bit of profit. So if this is something you want to jump on, go for it. But just to have a dollar's worth of profit doesn't really do it for me. But you can see how Seller Amp gives you so much information. And when you're doing online arbitrage right from the websites, you can just right click and start cross referencing to see if that product is actually selling for more on Amazon. Then once it was looking good, checking all the boxes, I would again just copy that ASIN, go into Profit Guru and start running it through their sales calculator and profit estimator just to make sure that I'm actually getting the profit back that Seller Amp is telling me because not everything is perfect. It is an estimate, but Profit Guru bases it on a uh, bestseller rank. So it's more accurate than anything else. So I always like to check it there last, just to make sure that the profit there says what seller ramp also says. Nobody wants to buy a product thinking they're going to make money. And then lo and behold, there actually isn't any profit after the fees. So always use those profit calculators to make sure there's money in your pocket left. So that was a rundown for you guys. Any of you that are new to Seller Amp, I hope you can see just how useful it is and why I use it typically every single day in my business, no matter if I'm storefront stocking, doing online arbitrage, looking for wholesale suppliers, no matter what I'm doing, any listing, Seller Amp is the first thing I'm looking at to do my quick scope of it to make sure every box is checking out. I do have a code for you guys down in the description where you can get some discount on Seller Amp if you choose to try it. And it also comes with a free trial too. So if you want Seller Amp, look down below and you'll see that in the description for you guys. I hope this was very helpful for you. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video.